Hey, welcome back guys. We're working on the 440 Plymouth Big Block project here tonight. Going to put the fuel pump on. Uh, a couple reasons for uh, jumping to that step now. Uh, I'm about ready to get the uh, valve train secured, get the push rods in place, but I had to order a part. Um, and then I got to thinking that it's probably wise to put the fuel pump on um, when you're spinning the engine around so that uh, it, it's easier to put on than when you're at top dead center on the compression stroke. Um, I can probably explain why with this old camshaft here. Um, if you take a look at a cam and this very first uh, lobe, if you will, although it's pretty round, um, and I think it's pretty round even on a new one. This is a well-used one. Uh, but my point here, if we can uh, get a good look at this, if you can see this gap here compared to this other round you know, on center journal, that this lobe that's moving the fuel pump is offset to this side over here, okay? So maybe it's hard to say in words, but it's easier to just show it. So as that thing's spinning around, okay, you see now in this orientation, it's closer to this side. So my point is that when you are at top dead center compression stroke, um, ready to basically drop the distributor in and get this thing fired up, that that lobe is pointing towards the pump and is actuating it. So it would make the pump hard to put on. So rather than keep spinning the engine around with the valve train in place, which will put pressure on the cam, it'll wipe all the grease off of the lobes, which actually I can show you because I put a lifter in there uh, just to demonstrate. And I rolled the thing around a little bit and it just wipes all the grease right on off of there. So, um, you know, you can see these lobes don't have lifters in them and they're still gooped up pretty well. That one's wiped pretty clean. So I'll have to go in before I put the push rods in. I'll add some more grease to that. But uh, yeah, I rolled the engine over. I mean, we're not at top dead center anymore. We're, we're um, I don't know, about, it says 270 there. You can see that this is the, uh, the lifter bore that will run the, uh, intake on number one and the lobe of the cam it's kind of pointing at it it looks like it's it's moving through that cycle right there so i believe this is going to be the easy place to put the fuel pump on and i'll show you in a minute here all right let's roll it around so it's easier to work on uh, maybe something like that i think the camera can still show it pretty well try to work around the camera Okay, um, so what do we have? Um, comes with a couple gaskets, and I guess let's start with that. The holes are really small. Um, check your bolts, check your gaskets, but you might have to open the holes up a little bit. So, you know, I took the X-Acto and just took a little bit off of these so that the bolts fit better. Um, otherwise, you're going to be fighting it. You won't be able to put it together uh, without the bolt, you know, tearing the gasket. So go ahead and Take a look at your gasket, try to fit your bolts first. Uh, I'm using this Carter pump. Uh, let's see, it's number M4845. Uh, I'm hoping it works well, we will see. And the one other thing to consider, uh, beyond the fuel pump yourself, I mean, you might wanna uh, be considering an electric one, I guess. There's a couple things to consider there, mechanical or electric. But if you're running the mechanical, it's the push rod. So uh, on these Mopar 440s anyways, there's a push rod that slides into a little bore in the block. And, and this actually drives on the camshaft. And then it actuates the uh, arm of the fuel pump. Kind of like that, if I can line it up. And then the cam's up at this end. Okay, so I bought that from Hughes. Um, it was part number 10010, and that's a hardened, um, will not wear out or mushroom, nice push rod. Okay, it cost a few bucks, but, you know, we're this far in, we might as well spend a few more and not worry about it. That and the one that came out had heavy wear. So that's where we're at on that. All right, well, before we start lubing this stuff up with, you know, our, our assembly lube, our cam lube and everything, um, let's get the RTV on the gasket. I like to use a little bit of, uh, RTV here. So let's get this thing kind of tacked up. This thing's kind of drying out on me, isn't it? I'm going to get something next time to open that hole up a little bit. All right. Well, let's just 
get a bunch of this on here. I'll move it around a little bit. These are pretty good gaskets. You know, they're not paper. I don't even think they technically need the RTV, but it'll help hold it in place, uh, if nothing else. So I'm going to just uh, use a little bit of this. I guess I'll call it sparingly. And just something like this. It's not going to hurt to have a thin layer of that. It's so tacky, too, that it may help seal it up. It's, this is okay to use in oil applications. This thing's going to be in the crankcase area getting splashed with oil and have pressure on it. So probably put this on, I'm thinking right on the fuel pump. Um, you could put it on the block, too, but then you're working to get those bolts through it. So let's try this. Get this guy on here. There we go. Something like that. Okay. And now we'll get into the lube. Wipe our hands down a little bit. I'm going to go with this Redline Assembly Lube for the push rod. Okay. And I'm going to put some on there. On the end, that's going to dry right against the cam. It's symmetrical. One end looked a little bit better than the other when I glanced at it. Just a small little like mark on this end. So this end is the end I'm going to use against the fuel pump. All right, so to fit it in there, and then I can probably get a light. Uh, I have one here. Let's see if we can get in closer. We can look at this a little bit better. Okay. All right, so this hole here, which is going to have a plug in it later. Just want to guide that in there. Let's see if I can just balance the camera. You can see it going in there. There she goes. Just kind of goes in almost under its own weight. Probably get your finger in there too and give it a little push. It just went all the way in by itself. Okay, perfect. So that is a precision <laughs> fit, but it obviously has just the right amount of clearance too. So, all right, so we got that. Um, I'm gonna go put a little bit of that lube right on the end of this. It's not gonna hurt. This is all gonna get splashed with oil. But uh, here we go. Get that gasket where we want it. And how about a little bit of Loctite on the bolts? So, these bolts are, uh, I think, 9 16 and I'm going to just put a little bit of the blue Loctite on it. Oh, it's really coming out of there. So, I got it on the threads there, and on my finger there. <laughs> okay, pretty good. I'm going to roll with that. chemical off my hands since I'm not wearing gloves and the side that's going to be closer to the block these are kind of a precision fit too okay the side closest to the block is going to be tight and a little harder to get access to so I've got the, the holes just barely big enough in that gasket as you can see, this one's was so tight that I had to actually thread it through the gasket. All right, well, let's see if that's going to give us trouble. Usually I wouldn't have the bolt sticking all the way through when I bring it into the, the block for the first time. Okay, let's see how this works. I actually rotate this down a little bit so I can see in there. Okay, there we go. See if I can find the hole. I think we got her. Okay, let me grab my uh, socket extension. See if I can't get down here into this one. Yep, like I thought, this one's going to be 
really tight and hard to get to. So I may end up going and getting a smaller tool. Let's see if I can get it. Well, for, for starters, I'll get the easy one. And then I won't have to hold this thing with both hands. Okay, so we're, we're close there. And I could probably snug it up a little bit more and get this thing to kind of stay where we want her. Okay, that's probably pretty close. All right, well, let me try to grab a different socket, maybe a shallow 9 16th instead of this long one. Let's see if I get lucky with that. Okay. If not, maybe we go to the quarter-inch drive stuff. And we'll see if this will work. Boy, it's close, but it's still tight. I might be getting in there with a wrench at this point. Let me see what the thinnest thing I have in ratchets. apologize for not doing a trial on this because uh, I have metric small ones but not the English so let me see if I could get it started by hand perhaps I'll get lucky you know what would be nice is a stud maybe on the one side and a knot that might be a little bit better to just get it lined up anyways. But if and when I get this together, we'll be torquing it to uh, 30 foot-pounds. Boy, that's a bugger. I don't remember it coming apart that hard. Maybe I didn't even have a fuel pump on this block when I got it. I'm trying to remember back. Hmm. Well, I'm not having much luck with my clearance here. So, um, uh, dun, 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 dun. maybe a wrench, but that's going to take forever on camera. I don't feel like that. Hmm. We are going to try it. Double check. Yeah, nine sixteenths. That's tight in there. Yeah, I do not remember this being such a bugger. But it's gonna fight me. Well, see, sometimes even the easy stuff. Takes a little extra time. I'm gonna have to go mess through my sockets and try to get one with like a, you know, a universal joint or flex bit or something on it. Um, a wobble bit. Maybe that'll work. Because this is gonna take forever. Yeah, I don't have the patience for that. 